So you are here because you want to draw using Procreate and you are deciding which iPad you should get. So we are going to keep this video with creative people in mind. So we have six iPads, two Apple Pencils and all kinds of technical specifications and all of this can add up to be really confusing when choosing which iPad is best for Procreate and best choice for you. So I hope I can help here. Hey, if you are new around here, I'm Eva and I'm a full-time artist. I create art with Procreate for clients, for my personal work, I'm creating classes using Procreate, Procreate brushes and all kinds of fun content using Procreate. I switched to Procreate after using Photoshop and Vacuum Cintiq for many years and I'm using Procreate now for many years as well. There are a lot of technicalities that you can focus on when choosing which iPad is best for you and which iPad is best for Procreate. But as I said, I want to focus on user case when you want to use iPad mainly with Procreate. Because when I was first choosing my first iPad, I was not even sure which technical specifications I should consider or look at when choosing the right iPad for me. So I also made a chart with all these values and technical specifications and I will put the link in the description if you want to check it out later. And of course, I will leave all the links to all of these iPads in the description so you have the link there if you want to check them out and also if you have any questions leave them in the comments below so we are going to be looking at ipad 9 generation then we have here ipad 10 generation which is this one in this fun color then we have ipad mini then we have ipad air and then we have the Pro versions, iPad 11 and iPad 12.9, which is this one. <laughs> and this is going to be quite in-depth video because I want to share with you as much as possible so you can choose the best iPad for Procreate, which is right for you. And basically this comes down to what is the most important for you. So keep that in mind until the end of the video. So let's talk about storage. And storage was one of the big decision-making factors for me when getting an iPad, because this influences how much basically artworks and canvas artworks you want to save on your iPad, how many reference images you want to keep in your camera roll, are you watching YouTube videos maybe offline so you want to download them to your device, or are you maybe watching Netflix and you want to have these videos offline available as well? Or classes, you want to watch them on the go? So in this case, you might want to consider bigger storage options. And if you think you can get away with the smaller storage and then you might be using cloud or backup disks or you don't basically need as many reference images in your camera roll, then you should consider smaller storage options. And when you're considering these storage options, some of the cheaper or budget-friendly models can come only with smaller storage or very big storage. And then if you go for a big storage option, then you are getting to the more pro models in price. So try to consider how much storage you really need for your specific case, and that can influence choosing the right iPad for you. Then what are the other decision-making criteria before we dive into basically talking about each of these iPads separately is the screen size of the iPad where I can consider how much working space while using Procreate I can have on each of these. Then there is also the portability, how light or how heavy they are because some of the models, as you can imagine, are much bigger and as you can see, are a little bit different in size and in weight but in my opinion it's not such a big difference in weight 
But that can be one of the main decision criteria for you as well, how portable the iPad is. Then another decision-making criteria, which was important for me as an artist and someone who uses Procreate a lot, is how many layers I can have on each of these models using Procreate. Another decision-making criteria for you can be which Apple Pencil is compatible with each iPad, because these Apple Pencils have a little bit different use case, but we will get to that later in the video. So all of these technicalities and details influence the price, so that will be another decision-making criteria. And now let's talk about each of these iPads one by one. So first let's talk about iPad Generation 9, which I think is a great value for the price and what you get with this iPad. And this would be my first recommendation when you are just starting out and you are not sure how much time you will spend using Procreate and iPad. So in this case, I think it's great also for beginners when you just want to explore. And I started with using iPad 10.5 with Apple Pencil Generation 1 and I was happy with it for years and I used it for drawing at home and outside as well. So I can't recommend it enough. But nowadays when you have a little bit more newer models, this design can feel a little bit outdated compared to some of the newer models. But nevertheless, I think it's great value comparing with other iPads, considering the price and all the apps you can use basically using this iPad. And if you're asking if it is good enough for using Procreate, I think it's great. So definitely this is a great option when you want to use Procreate and draw uh, with an iPad. Also, what I really like when I was drawing with this iPad was holding it on the side by this frame so you're actually not touching the screen and I was using this iPad to draw outside as in home, as I said, just holding it like this and it was pretty easy to use. Plus, another point, if you are getting the iPad 9th generation, it's more accessible with budget and when you decide you want to upgrade, basically you can upgrade anytime to some of the newer models. And now let's talk about the availability of the layers with this model. With this artwork, which was a little bit more complex, I would have to choose some of the layers I need to merge down, so I will have to work with limited amount of layers with bigger artworks. Because with iPad generation 9, for example, size uh, 3000 by 3000 pixels, you get 25 layers. And with the bigger size canvases and centimeters and millimeters, European sizes like A2, you get only three layers. So you have to be, or you have to get quite creative on how to use these layers. And with canvas size 16 inches by 16 inches, you get seven layers. So as I said, you get quite limited amount of layers with bigger size canvases. So it's up to you if you decide that you really want to work with the many layers on bigger canvas sizes in Procreate, or it's good enough for you with smaller size canvases, or this can be something as a decision-making factor if you want to follow some specific classes or tutorials and in these tutorials they are using very big canvas sizes and you don't want to be limited with amount of layers or you are not sure how to basically creatively work around it but it's definitely doable so i think this would be one of my first recommendations as i said great value comparing with other ipads what you get for this price And now let's talk about iPad generation 10. With this model, there is 
more updated look on the screen so you have more screen size compared to iPad generation 9 and as you can see the updated more modern look is something which you might want to consider if design is more important for you and also as you can see there are more of these funky colors which you can choose from from this updated modern look so if this is something you find important maybe consider iPad generation 10 compared to the generation 9 Another feature which might be interesting for you is that this iPad has a camera on the side which is more landscape. So if you want to have video calls and you place your iPad into the holder or basically anything, you, this can be quite useful because all the other iPads have camera on the shorter side of that iPad. Also, compared to the previous model, the charging is a little bit different on this iPad because it's updated that you can charge your Apple Pencil with the cable, but you need a converter for that. But in my packaging of the Apple Pencil 1, it came with the adapter. So if you don't mind using adapter with the lightning cable, this is something to consider. There is a little bit of the upgrade from generation nine because I always find it a little bit too fragile with <laughs> the generation nine because I was always worried that the pencil might break when it's charging if I move the iPad in a wrong way. So I like that, that it's updated in this one with the cable. And when it comes to the layers on this iPad, you have bigger range or amount of layers that you can use compared to generation nine. Here with the iPad generation 10, the number of layers with canvas size 3000 by 3000 pixels, you get 55 layers. And with the canvas size 16 inches by 16 inches, you get 19 layers, which is more than with generation nine. All right, to sum up this iPad generation 10 compared to previous model generation nine, I think this has more modern look, bigger screen size, overall weight, I think it's very similar, but you get more layers using Procreate. So if that's more important for you and also the design of this iPad, and also upgraded charging for the Apple Pencil 1 compared to the Generation 9 iPad, consider choosing iPad Generation 10. And now let's talk about iPad mini. So iPad mini, despite its size, I think it's amazing what you can do with this small model iPad and it's very light. You can use it using basically one hand and it's, as I said, very light. So very convenient to travel with or use as a digital sketchbook. And a huge upgrade from the previous models for me is that with this model, you get to use the Apple Pencil Generation 2. So basically you get to charge the pencil on the side of the iPad. So it's charging all the time. And also this is kind of like the storage option. So you don't have to worry about, you know, if you are going to lose the pencil or it's like rolling somewhere away. So this is a huge update for me and consideration coming from the previous models before because when I was using the Apple Pencil 1 I didn't realize it that much but my hand started to basically get tired after a long time using the iPad and if you're using or considering Apple Pencil Generation 1 consider getting a special cover for the pencil so your hand doesn't get tired because the surface is definitely more slippery compared to this newer iPad pencil generation 2 and also it has this ledge or side of the pencil which is more flat where you can rest your hand better plus the Apple pencil generation 2 doesn't have the cap charging option which uh, is an upgrade definitely in my opinion because I don't have to worry about losing the basically the top part of the pencil so anyway so one of the the main points for me going from the previous 9 and 10 generation of the iPad 
is the user experience with Apple Pencil Generation 2. And also with this model, you get an upgrade or there is a better technology in the screen. So basically with this model of an iPad, you already get the laminated screen display, so better display. And when you look up close, there is this slight distance from the canvas through the basically the screen to your pen, but this is barely noticeable to, I think, <laughs> human eye. At least I never considered that when I was using the previous generation before getting the newer iPad, but it is there, but it's super, super small, so tiny, so not so noticeable, but I wanted to mention it that with this model, you already get better screen. Also, with this model size, you have to consider the way you are drawing. So either you will be drawing, resting your hand, maybe on the side of the iPad, so kind of keeping your hand in the air, or you are going to place your hand on top of the iPad where you are covering a bigger part of your art. So if you are planning to use this uh, as your maybe digital sketchbook, try to go maybe somewhere either to the shop or borrow it from your friend to test it out if this size of an iPad is for you because it's relatively smaller to other iPad sizes but it's very, very portable. So I know some people that they are using this iPad as a secondary iPad, which I never considered because for me, one iPad is definitely enough. But if you are considering a secondary iPad as a digital sketchbook that you want to carry with you all the time, this, I think it's a great option. And talking about the layer amount that you can use with this model, with the canvas size 3000 pixels by 3000 pixels with 300 dpi, you get already 55 layers and 16 inches by 16 inches, you get 19 layers, which I think is great and uh, more than enough or basically enough layers for most of the people. Okay, so Overall, I think this is a great iPad with a great technical specification. You have enough layers, you have great display to draw on, you get to use Apple Pencil too, and it's very portable. So I think this is a great iPad. If one of the big criteria for you is the portability and you want to have as smallest and lightest iPad you can get. And now let's talk about iPad Air. So iPad Air, I think it's a great option for someone who already know that they want to be using iPad more often and using Procreate quite often. Also, another decision-making criteria for getting this iPad is the Apple Pencil Generation 2, which you get to use with this model. So for example, you might be someone who is upgrading from the previous models like generation nine or generation 10. And you also know that you want bigger screen size that you get with iPad mini. And in that case, this might be a great option for you. Also, this iPad gets the better display comparing to generation nine and 10. So you have the laminated display, which is great to work on. You have bigger screen size to work on than with iPad mini. And also this is quite portable iPad because as the name suggests, it's iPad Air. So it's quite light. And in addition to this, if you are into the design of these iPads, iPad Air comes with different colors. So you can choose a color that you like. One thing to consider with this model is that Apple gets quite creative with the storage sizes when it comes to iPad. And with iPad Air, as of now, you get to choose only between two storage sizes, which is smaller 64 size and 200. 56 gigabyte size and with a bigger storage size you get closer to the price point of ipads pro so here i would really consider how much space you need with your ipad and basically the ipad air if 64 gigabytes is enough for you or you need to get bigger storage and as i said this is influenced by the reference images videos you want to have offline in your ipad and so on 
So, and let's talk about the amount of layers that you can get with this iPad, which is already great because with the size of 3000 by 3000 pixels, you already get 112 layers and 16 inches by 16 inches, you get 41 layers which I think it's great. So overall, I think this is a great model. For example, if you are someone who is upgrading from the previous generation nine and generation 10 models, and you know that you want to use Apple Pencil generation two, but you want bigger screen size than iPad mini. And now let's talk about the pro models. First about iPad Pro 11. So with the iPad Pro and basically both Pro versions of iPad, you get more storage options compared to the iPad Air and some of the previous models. With iPad Pro 11, you also get to use the Apple Pencil Generation 2, which is great because that might be one of the decision-making factors for you. And also with the new models of iPad Pro, starting from 2022, you get the M2 chip, which also gives you the hover over function in Procreate, which is a fun feature to use because you get to adjust the brush with your fingers. So basically easily adjusting the brush size while drawing and also the opacity of the brush, you can just adjust with slide one finger on the screen while drawing and also you have this funky hover over feature over the other icons in Procreate as well and both iPad Pro versions are suitable for someone who want to do more advanced things also like 3D rendering or video editing on your iPad also with iPad Pro models, there is the promotional display upgrade, so you get better display to draw on. And there is also higher refresh rate, which I think is barely noticeable to basically human eye. But when you slow down the video, you can see that it is noticeable compared to some of the older iPads. Also compared to iPad Air, when you want to use Procreate, you get similar amount of layers. So with iPad Pro 11 and M2 chip with 3000 by 3000 pixels canvas and, th and 300 DPI, you get 112 layers, the same as with iPad Air and also with a 16 by 16 inches and 300 DPI, you also get 41 layers which is great amount of layers if you want to use Procreate and create artworks with many, many layers. So in my opinion, who is this iPad Pro 11 for is for someone who is considering the storage space in your iPad as one of the important features compared to iPad Air, for example. And also you want to use the Apple Pencil tool with the hover over function with M2 chip with the models from 2022. And you have a bigger budget available compared to when you want to get iPad Air. But again, here, consider the storage size that you want to get. If you are okay with just 64, maybe consider iPad Air. And if you want bigger storage options and the M2 chip with the hover over function, consider the iPad Pro 11. And now let's talk about iPad Pro 12.9 because this is an iPad that I am currently using and I'm not gonna lie, I really love using it because I think it's amazing. You get amazing display with high response rate, also the big screen size to draw on. So you have a big area to basically use a Procreate on. You can also rest your hand on the screen and with the newer models with M2 chip, you also get the hover over option while using Procreate. And also with the iPad Pro, you get bigger storage options. So you can download uh, videos that you want to watch offline later whether it's uh, movies, classes, or YouTube videos. So you have plenty of storage for those in your iPad as well. 
ASAM, maybe photos, which you want to edit or you want to do video editing on your iPad. And also because it's iPad Pro, you also get to use some of the advanced tools like 3D rendering or as I said, video editing. And also to be able to use Apple Pencil 2 was one of the big decision-making criteria when upgrading from my previous iPad model. And I was using iPad 10.5 for many years. And when I was deciding for an upgrade or a newer version of an iPad, I was a little bit apprehensive about the size of iPad Pro 12.9. As you can imagine, it's a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier than some of the other models of an iPad. But as you can see, I can hold it in one hand also no problem but I mainly use it at home so I have the iPad on the table or if I go to draw outside I am drawing maybe in a cafe so I can again place the iPad on the table so there is not an issue and if I want to draw also somewhere like maybe in a park I can hold it in one hand but maybe not for a long period of time like maybe one hour but you can always rest the iPad on your knees or basically use some kind of like a holder or I mainly use it when I place it on my knees and then I can also rest my hand on the screen which is a huge benefit when drawing because you can see bigger part of the artwork and not cover it whole with your hand. So after getting used to this bigger screen size, it's a little bit harder to use the smaller screen size, but that's something to consider because it is bigger and a little bit heavier than other versions of an iPad. So if you are considering if you should get iPad Pro 11 or iPad Pro 12.9, consider if you are going to use it mostly at home or in the cafes or you want to carry it around with you, which I don't find as a big issue with this model. I just needed to check if it fits into my bag and it's not too heavy. I have a backpack, so basically the size of an iPad doesn't matter that much but I have a smaller backpack, so I measured the backpack if it fits in my bag, basically, so I can still carry it with me if I want to draw outside. So to summarize who I think this model is great for is for someone who want to have the option of bigger storage on your iPad, also bigger amount of layers compared to some of the old models, also the bigger screen size to draw on and also the option with the newer models of iPad Pro from 2022, the M2 chip, which allows you to use the hover over functionality in Procreate, which is fun to use. And also for someone who wants to have the advanced option for video editing maybe or 3D rendering. So overall, I am very happy with my iPad Pro 12.9 and it might be a good choice for you too. To summarize and reiterate, I would recommend iPad Generation 9 for most people who are just starting out with iPad and they are not sure how much they are going to use the iPad and they just want to explore. Then for people who want to have a little bit more screen size space and more modern refreshed look and also bigger amount of layers, this would be a great choice. Then for people who consider portability one of the biggest decision-making factors, I would choose iPad mini and that one is also compatible with Apple Pencil Generation 2. Then if you have a bigger budget and maybe you are upgrading from some of the older models and you also want to have bigger amount of layers, I would recommend iPad Air. And then if you want more storage space and also the option for the hover over function in Procreate, I would recommend iPad Pro. And if you are really into drawing on a bigger screen size, I would recommend iPad Pro 12.9. 
So these are all the new iPads and it was a lot of info and details and I would love to know which one would you choose. So please let me know in the comments below. And also if you have any questions, ask in the comments below and I will try to answer as many as possible. And if you find the video helpful and you know someone that you might benefit from it, please share it with them. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe. And if you are looking for more inspiration, you can watch some of my artist vlogs where I share with you some of my days as an artist, like day in the life of an artist, or you can watch some of my Procreate tutorials. So thank you so much for being here and see you next time. Bye.